Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives. And today we're going to be concluding our discussion on the end of the Spider-Verse storyline as we take a look at Spider-Man Volume 4, Number 7. So, <clears throat> last time on End of the Spider-Verse. Well, Shadra won. Yeah, essentially Shadra won. While she wasn't able to convert every spider totem in the multiverse, well, she had pretty much managed to get a, a good get. She managed to get essentially the majority of them under her thrall, and as such, from there, with the help of Nestling, she was able to little by little restructure the Great Web into her Great Nest, very much and pretty much causing all of the multiverse to fall under her hive, so to speak. Ultimately, the remaining Spideys didn't actually give up their didn't end up giving up the ghost as they would admit as thankfully, thanks to the machinations of Night Spider, they did manage to get their hands on the totem dagger, but it became a quickly a matter of actually getting it to Shothro so that you could, you know, stab her with it. On top of that, there were still other things going around that everyone needed to deal with. For example, Hunter Spider came back and wanted to get backup so he could go and save Miles. And likewise, in the case of Peter Parker, he did end up contacting Silk and letting her know that he had the strand of Web of Life and Destiny. As such, it resulted in a divide and conquer plan, with Hunter Spider, Madam Web, and Night Spider going to rescue Miles, um, Sun Spider, and the Web Weaver going, you know, Sun Spider and Spider UK going to act as backup for Peter. Going to act as backup for Peter, and help, so they can help him, you know, fit, so you can help him with the strand of the web of life and destiny that he has. And then, likewise, the remaining Spideys would try and sneak, to, would try and get to Loom World with Moreland, so they could, so they could eventually stab her with a knife. Unfortunately, while they were, while that team of Spideys was able to get into Loom World under everybody's nose, well, while they were at one, when Moreland tried stabbing Shatter with a knife. Turns out it did jack shit, as, well, she was never co connected to the Web of Life and Destiny. So, ergo, the, the, the knife did nothing to her, so, basically, that whole plan was for nothing. However, on the other, with the other superhero teams, they are getting more success in there. They're getting more success. In the case of, in the case of Hunter Spider, Madam Web, and Spider UK, they managed to rescue Miles Morales and all the other spider totems that that Shothra could not convert. And as such, while being trapped, Miles actually had an idea of how to best counter Shothra. As walking at Spider-Mobile, he learned that there were at least probably a few other Spideys that Shothra couldn't convert. And so Madam and so Madam Webb, realizing what their plan was, gave the pair of Spideys the, their own dimensional teleporter, and so Miles and the Spider-Mobile went off to get a few more recruits, while the remainder well, the remaining numbers went to go help the, sp the team of Spideys that were on Loom World. Whereas, we're, whereas we're back with Peter, th back with Peter, we saw that he was creating a machine to utilize the, web the strand of the Web of Life and Destiny that he got. And while that was going on, while well, Shatra did send a pair of wa wasp, wasp Spideys to try and enter to try and impede him, thanks to the machinations of Spider UK and Sun Spider, they kind of got their asses handed to them. Unfortunately, though, Shatra is still very much gaining a victory, and while well, and it looks like that everybody's losing. So Moreland, pretty much deciding, fuck it, we're going to we're gonna die anyway, decided to try and siphon out Cindy's life force, but in a bid to defend herself, Cindy met one of grabbing the totem dagger and slashed him, which in turn <clears throat> Sorry, which in turn started causing the life essence of spider tomes to start literally leaking out of his body and start repairing the web, the the great and start repairing the great web. As such, she wound up doing a major slash to him, which released all of the spider totems life energy that he had siphoned, and all of that energy wound up going right into the web of life and destiny, and completely rewrote it and rewove it, ascent, causing a massive explosion of energy that not only brought the web of life and destiny back, but sent all available spideys in the multiverse just hurtling across reality, which is where today's issue begins, as we open up in Earth-616, as we see Peter getting the finishing touches on his final device, with what a, a little funny thing, I love that the little spiders that were part of Spider's man's body are actually offering him assistance. Sorry, Chindy jumped on the bed, and she's probably going to cause more disturbances, so apologies in advance. But, ultimately... But ultimately, Peter's getting the final getting the final touches done. But in the case of Spider UK, but basically Spider UK ends up asking Madam Web what the hell's going on. And yeah, she and the other Spideys of the multiverse are just hurtling across reality. As with the Web of Life and Destiny now restored, well, it's now pretty much just sending everyone right to the edge of the Spider Verse. Which even when Sp when Sun Spider hears that, she asks, "What are they going to land Earth one million? But the thing is, that the thing is, well. While Earth-001 was considered the first world, the thing about the multiverse is that, well, in a meta context, there is one world that came before them all. One that is considered the prime branch, so to speak. The tree that all the other realities seem to split off from. And that world is Earth-616. And as a result, that world is considered the edge of the Spider-Verse, as all the available Spideys in the multiverse get hurtled there. And... Uh, 
And to make matters better, and to make matters better, it turns out that a side effect of the web of life and destiny being restored, it purged Shathra's essence from all the wasp converted spideys, pretty much restoring every spider person in the multiverse back to their original selves, which may, in turn means that Shathra has effectively lost her army. Excuse me one second. Apologies, Chinny was doing stuff. But yeah, Shathra has effectively lost her army, and all the spideys in the multiverse just crash land out of Earth 616 in an honestly awesome two page spread. Let me see if I can find it. It's actually really damn good. It is. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Here it is. The Spideys of the Multiverse just crashing down to Earth 616. As such, while the. As such, while all the Spideys try and do their best to reorient themselves and catch whoever and catch anyone that they can, they prim basically from a from a single standpoint, it looks like the good guys kind of won this. The Web of Life and Destiny has been restored. All the Spideys that Shadra got under her thrall have been restored back to their proper places. Everything should be good, right? Uh, not really. As well as 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 whenever as everyone's calming down, Spinstress, who's now back to being a who's now back to being a spider herself. States that this really isn't a time for calm. As well, now is usually the part of the story when the evil queen comes back as a giant monster. And sure enough, well, when each of the Spideys were purged of Shadow's essence, they wound up leaving their bodies in the form of a swarm of wasps that all came out of their mouths. And those swarms of wasps have all coalesced in the middle of New York City as Shathra. And yes, she is now a fucking giant. As such, as such, Shathra, while essentially, while Shathra has now essentially been beaten, she's not down for the count either, and she pretty much just tells them this makes no difference, that they may have, that they may have restored the Web of Life and Destiny, but she's not gonna give up. She will, she will claim that thing as her own and turn it into her great hive, and she will kill as many Spideys as she needs to in order to make that happen. And so, now we, now we reach the full climax of the story. As every Spidey in the multiverse verse goes up against Shathra. And, uh, yeah, that's just as epic as it sounds. Literally, Silk just orders every single Spider-Man and p spider person to just charge right at Shathra and to not let up for a second. Although, I should probably mention this. In the middle of all this, the, the question is raised where the hell Morlin is, since, well, Cindy kind of had to cut him up in order to restore the web... Well, Morlin's kind of down for the count as well. As like the other Spideys, he was hurled to, he was hurled to Earth 616 as well, but he's not doing so hot. He's very much weak and frail and well, even as he is, even a light breeze could knock him down. As such, he decides he as such while he's feeling nothing but hunger, he realizes that he needs to just vi he needs to am scray pronto. As as well as he is, the Spideys could easily take him down, and as a result, he manages to open a portal and leaves to another universe. Where does he go? Check back in when we look at Web of Carnage number one to find out. But either way, back with Shatra, the Spideys are all just kicking her ass. And yeah, but, and yes, well, and yes, it is just as awesome as it sounds. Although Madam Web thinks that they still can't beat this because the prophesied one that can def that was supposed to be defeat Shatra was supposed to be a Peter Parker. And ultimately, the one that that particular Peter Parker was supposed to be the main universe one, but he's not here. However, they're still getting backup as well, as another portal opens, and from it comes Miles and the Spider Mobile, who managed not to get hurled to Earth six one six because the Spider-Mobile apparently turned into the skid, so to speak. But ultimately, their plan was successful as they managed to go to other worlds that Shatter had cut off and managed to get the help of those world Spideys. And the reason why these particular spider people weren't converted to Shatter's cause? Because all of them have mech suits! And as such, more portals open, and as Shatter continues duking it out with the Spider Army from these other portals come Penny Parker, a.k.a. Spider, Takuya Yamashiro, a.k.a. the a.k.a. Subida Man, riding in his giant robot leopard in the Mex a Mech Strike Spider-Man, who's supposed to be, I think, from a, from a series, of, from a to either a toy line or a comic series called Mech Strike, and the Megamorph Spider-Man. See, he was actually alive. And as a result, these four, uh, these four Jamaica riding Spideys come riding in and just start, and just start kicking Shathra's ass, which... Yeah, I won't deny. That's awesome. I like, like, remember how I said in the last Spider-Verse miniseries how Takuya for showing up in his giant robot really didn't feel as strong as it did the first time? Well, how do you revitalize that? Simple. You get three, you get four giant robots. That's, that's awesome. It's really awesome. But ultimately, Madam Web says that all, well, all they can really do is just hold Shatra off. They still need the Peter Parker verse 616. And since he's not a Spidey, he's not going to be here. Well, turns out that... 
Turns out that Madam Web spoke too soon, as another portal opens and come it from and, fr and from it comes Sun Spider and Spider UK. And right behind them, we see Peter Parker hobbling along as we see the fruits of his labor strapped to his arm. What he calls a great web shooter. Essentially, it's just a su of an exceedingly souped up web shooter who's what who's fuel who's basically it's basically all loaded up with a strand of the web of life and destiny. Now, Peter arrives on the scene because he fully intends on giving this to Silk. But Silk tells Peter, no. This is his. This is his win. He. This is his win. So he needs. So he should get ready to take the shot. And so, with a smile on his face, Peter points the great web shooter at Shatra, and he thwips. And sure enough, a, a, a great web line flies out and then just hits Shatra right in her abdomen, and she just goes down screaming, talking about how there shouldn't. How this isn't possible. There is no spider that can in the multiverse who can take her down. And Peter's response: I'm no spider. I'm just a man. And then from there, Shatra is gone. Completely erased. Just almost vaporized, so to speak. Which, yep, the good guys have finally won. Shatra has been defeated. And, everyone's just, and everyone just feels a kind of a sigh of relief. Although everyone asks if, if Shatra has really been erased, so to speak. Which... No, Aranya is able to confirm, thanks to her sp her totem magic whatevers, that, Ar that ultimately Shathor was not destroyed, but she is on another plane of existence, kind of away from everybody else. And, well, we soon learn what happened to her, as, among all the Spideys, appears Neth. Maybe. Maybe not physically, but she does create a projection, which does surprise a few Spideys on the scene. But basically, yeah. Basically, by being shot by the la by that strand of the web of life and destiny, ne basically, Shathra has been... Restore, has been restored back to her proper self. The infection that was spreading across her heart has been purged out, and she's now back to the person that she was before she grew jealous of her sister. So, basically, the threat of Shathra is over, and Neth is just... Mo and Neth explains that she's forever grateful to the spiders of the multiverse for not only saving the web of life and destiny, but also for restoring her sister. And as such, as a thank you, she ends up using her magical powers... To recreate that, to recreate that little bobble that Peter, Night Spider, and Anya went, went to, wound up going to that temp, wound up going to the temple to get. And so, and so, as she gives it to them, Neth disappears. And well, 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 since that artifact is supposed to be able to restore lost Spideys, they take the totem that Aranya takes it, and in conjunction with the totem dagger, she's able to recite a spell and begins reweaving the web of life and reweaving the web and she begins reweaving lost Spideys. And of course, that starts with Jessica Drew, who of course everyone remembers having been lost. And sure enough, we're saying, and sure enough. And sure enough, in a mass of glowing webs, Matt, Spider Woman returns, not having been none the wiser of having lost any time. And while she's a little confused as to what the heck's going on, since the last thing she remembers is being stabbed by Spider Man Noir, everyone is still happy to see her, and her friends end up going in and giving her a hug. It's still really nice and so forth. However, that's not the only thing that the that's not the only thing that gets restored because you see with the web of life and destiny now restored it's also reweaving any threads that were cut and so with cut and thanks and as such with the help with the help of the with the help of the art of the spider of the spider art of the spider artifact and the knife ultimately more ultimately more spideys begin being restored as then as well they can tell that there's another sp there's another person on the scene that should be that should be something else and sure enough the energies begin coalescing around peter and begin restoring him back into the amazing spider-man his life now back to the way it was although peter isn't exactly happy about this as once he's restored back to his proper self the first thing he does is push everyone aside and call Aunt May. As well, you remember how in the how in the timeline where he wasn't Spider-Man, Uncle Ben was alive? Yeah, with him now being restored and the timeline being put back in its proper place, Uncle Ben is now dead again. And with Peter calling May, he is it pretty much just confirms that, yeah, everything good that he had gotten from that other timeline is kind of erased as well. Although Although he does ask Aunt May, maybe she wants to do like a Thursday night dinner. So that if, they, if they can probably start doing a, you know a Thursday night dinner, you know, just the two of them. It's it's sweet. I like that. It's it's but it still kind of hits you hard. However, even with Spidey now back in play, the totem dagger and the, the totem dagger and the artifact are still reacting. As it turns out, there were other Spideys that were severed from the web of life and destiny, and it continues restoring them. And the next one that it's brought back 
is Kane Parker, the Scarlet Spider, which everyone is surprised by, as nobody remembers him being there at the, at the fight, and he claims that he was stabbed with a totem dagger before Jessica was. Well, it turns out that when you... It, we, it turns out that... When you're stabbed with the dagger, it's a lot more thorough than you realize. Because, yeah, despite the fact that if we go back to issue one and look back at that battle, we don't see the Scarlet Spider, apparently, yeah, he was one of the Spideys that was called there. It's just that no one remembers him actually being there because the dagger began erasing his memory, pretty much, I'm guessing, going back. So, from their perspective, it was like he was never there at all. Which, everyone starts remembering him again, but even they're like, it's a good thing we didn't completely forget about you. But they think I think they've spoke a little too soon because the dagger and the gold spider are still are have they're still bringing back Spideys as there is still one more spider that was stabbed by the dagger who who they want who they want to bring back and nobody knows who it is but it's the last Spidey on the list the last one that was destroyed the last one that was erased and severed from the web of love and destiny and so as the energies coalesce we see we see another Spidey rise from the ashes and ladies and gentlemen. This is where we are introduced to the Spider-Boy of the main Marvel Universe. And apparently, this kid has been around for a while. As when Spider-Boy is as when Spider-Boy is restored, he actually names every all the immediate 616 Spideys by name. Peter, Miles, Jessica, all that jazz. But none of them know who he is. They all, do, it's for when they look at him, it's a blank. They don't recognize him. And as he, and as Spider-Boy is a little shocked by this, eventually he decides, you know what, screw this, I'm out of here. And he's, as he just, as he just jumps off all the bit, as he just jumps around the scene and then, re, and then leaves. At first, Spidey-UK wants to stop him because, well, he's a Spidey, because, well, with everything over, they need to send all the Spideys home. But yeah, Madam Web is able to re is able to confirm Spider Boy is from the main Marvel universe. It's just that for whatever reason, when he was stabbed by the dagger, it was a lot more thorough. So nobody remembers him at all. And as such, even with him restored, the memories that the memories associated with him are not have not come back. So yeah, he's essentially a mystery. But it's a mystery for another day. As, like I said, they still gotta send all the other, all, they gotta send all the Spideys back to their proper world. The, the crisis is over, so now what are they gonna do? As such, uh, as such, all the Spideys kinda begin crowding around Cindy, since she's still the chosen one, so to speak. And Cindy, now with technically restored back to her proper self, is starting to get a little freaked out and thinks, you know, I, I don't think I really wanna be the chosen one here. And basically, she does kind of push everyone aside as she wants to get in the side with Peter and says that she feels bad that he wasn't the chosen one. But Peter says that it's fine. He th and, and honestly, he believes that there could be no one better than Cindy to be a chosen one. In the meantime, though, he has other business to attend to. As while the sp as while everyone's trying to gather their is trying to gather themselves, he sees a he sees a. He sees a red fi he sees a red fire engine driving by going to deal with a fire and well Peter's back Peter's back in his spideys in his spidey duties and well and this neighborhood still needs its friendly neighborhood web slinger and so he leaps off the building as he proclaims himself as as now and forever the amazing Spider-Man as he goes off to help more people in need so there you go. That's end of the Spider Verse. There's also another story in there which I'll talk about once I'm done giving my thoughts on end of the Spider Verse because uh. Yeah, I pulled a dum dum and didn't realize that it was actually from an earlier issue in the book. But hey, that's what happens when you read through this, when you read it as a trade. But whatever. So, my thoughts on End of the Spider Verse. It's enjoyable. It's a very much enjoyable storyline. It, like, I think it, one of the bit ma major benefits for me, at least, for End of the Spider Verse is well, believe it or not. The fact that it's a self-contained story. Yeah, while I may love Spider-Verse, and I will openly admit that I still enjoyed the original Spider-Verse storyline and Spider-Geddon, one of the things that I will always complain about when I reread those books are the fact that the are the fact that all of the tie-ins are kind of so integral to each of the comics. Again, both of those books do have straightforward stories that you can follow, but there are still plot points, of course, that you need to read the tie-ins to fully understand. And while the tie-ins themselves aren't bad and they're they're enjoyable in their own right, that still kind of feels annoying. If I don't like, I don't really want to have to read supplement 
supplemental material just to understand this one particular storyline. I can understand that maybe reading that could enhance the story, but if you make it a necessary reading, then I'm sorry, I think you might be doing something wrong. And I know that that's a regular industry standard when it comes to big events and crossovers and the like, but that still doesn't mean it's not stupid. With that said, though, the end of the Spider-Verse storyline is a very straightforward story. It pretty much can, has tells everything that it needs to in the page in the in the in the confines of Spider-Man. And oddly enough, when you actually stop and think about it, while the story is meant to be a Spider-Verse story, at its core. It is just a, it is still a Spider-Man comic. It's still a Spider-Man story. In the beginning of the story, of course, Peter's considered the chosen one, so he's elected as the leader of the remaining Spideys of the multiverse. And even after, and while there is an issue where he's erased, well, is erased, there's still there's still a question of what they're gonna do from then on. But even then, even but even then, while Peter was was completely erased from history. Or, or Spider-Man was, at least, Peter Parker is still an integral part of the story. And I'll give credit where it's due, I like how that was integrated in. And to kind of go off on that, I like I said when I looked at issue 5 of the story, I loved the alternate history we got with Peter Parker in there. Because, like I said, when it comes down to alternate histories where someone who should have become a hero is instead put in a position where they never got their powers, we're typically shown timelines where everything went to hell, that because they didn't take on those powers, that, er that things are bad, and that they need to make sure that the event happens the way it's supposed to so that Peter, so that the superhero becomes the proper superhero, and blah, 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 blah. My point is, they don't... My point is, all of them typically follow that trend. But what I like is that when we see the now, when we saw the alternate history of this of Peter Parker in this new timeline, it actually still put him in a proper light. Like I said, the, his spider duties are being covered by Cindy as she went on taking on the mantle of the of the world of the primary spider person in place of Peter. And even with Pete, and even though Peter no longer could stick to walls or or jump up or jump from building to building or shoot webs out of his wrists, he was still doing his best and helping out where he could, as he was inspired by Silk's example and wanted to do good and help others and as a result he wound up and as a result he wound up getting in contact with Silk and essentially became her tech guy supplying her with stuff helping her out when necessary and as a result while Peter's not fighting on the front lines he still helped out in his own way then even in the final issues he's the one that saves the day he's the one that gets the strand of the web of life and destiny from Spider Norman he's the one that builds the great web shooter and at the end of the story he's the one that delivers the coup a Grad to Shathra, which honestly I kind of find hilarious because all, the only reason Peter got put in that position was because was because Shathra had one of her had one of her wasp totems stab him with the totem knife, meaning that if she just hadn't done that, she might have won. She might have secured a victory, but because she had to take Spider-Man off the board, it put Peter right into the right into the exact position he needed to be to have the to so have the have the weapons needed to take her down. It's perfect in my opinion, and quite frankly, I will not. And quite frankly, yes. While Pe and quite frankly, even at the end when we see Peter hobbling in with the great web shooter, it still kicks ass as he just kind of sit as he looks at Shot or smiles and then just does that last thwip, even doing a even delivering a nice quiet badass line as as when she says no spider can beat her, he just says I'm no spider, I'm just a man. It's kick ass and I dig it. But at the same time, it also still hurts when Peter's life is restored to Spider Man as. While I'm happy to see Spider-Man back in his proper place, again, we also know what he's lost now. So, uh, yeah, that's a nice kick in the teeth. But again, it's still enough. But again, I still dig that. And I get. And again, when you actually really think about it, from beginning to end, the story still focuses on Peter. His role may change throughout the story, but at the end of the day, he's still the one that save. He's still the one that del that saves the day. And I do dig that. And I and by that same token, I like how the how the story develops from that in that regard. In the case of Cindy, I do like that she's given a lot more focus in the course of the story. As while they, while uh, while the Spideys wind up getting it wrong of who the chosen one was supposed to be Cindy was I like that how they kind of revealed Cindy as the chosen one as by virtue of the timeline being rewritten because Peter never became spider-man Cindy was put into a position 
where she could be a lot more confident. She could be a lot more secure in herself because with with her personal timeline being rewritten to integrate the fact that Peter never became Spider-Man, she became a lot more confident, a lot more a lot more ready to go because like, from her perspective, she's been the one dealing with all these threats. She's been the one that fights a supervillain. She's been the one that probably dealt with a few Spider-Man shit. And as a result, she's the one that's ready to go in guns blazing because, well, she's the kick-ass superhero. And I love that by the end, and I love that by the end, she's the one that kind of ha that kind of has to be that they ultimately carries the mantle of being the chosen one. As yes, while Peter was still an integral part of taking the bad guy down, at the same time, that does it doesn't take away from what Cindy did, as it was because it was as it was her actions that ultimately saved the Spider Verse and restored the web of life and destiny. So again, I dig that. I really do enjoy it. And of course, if I have to list every, and of course, if you have a Spider Verse story, well, you gotta get the fan, you gotta get the fan service out of the way. And yes, so the end of the Spider Verse has that, and then some. Now, ultimately, I feel it can be a little hampered by the fact that the majority of Spideys in the multiverse are converted to wasp totems by the time that this story occurs. So, in a way, that does kind of take away from it, but. Kind of on the flip side, it also really raises the stakes of the story because, well, unlike the other Spider-Verse events, we are jumping into this event, into this storyline when the bad guy is on the cusp of victory. And ultimately, while there are still people wanting to fight the good fight and take her down, that number is very small, and the people that would have helped the Spideys in the past are now on the bad guy side. And I will, have, and and yeah, like I said, and going back to when it was revealed that Shatra had already converted a good chunk of Spideys in the multiverse to her cause, that was a horrifying sight. Just seeing her sitting in the middle of this horde of wasp of wasp Spideys, all of them just looking menacing and creepy as they're all of all their images have been corrupted and now serve and now all loyally serve Shatra. It's just honestly kind of horrifying in that regard. And going off of that, Shatra's a real actually a really good villain. I dig her. As I when I compare her to the inheritors, she feels like she has a bigger gra uh, like a firmer grasp on things, and she definitely feels like a lot more of an intimidating customer than the inheritors. And I mean, and, and in that same regard, now in that same regard, like the inheritors, she does kind of feel like an OP villain. As like the inheritors, she's an interdimensional creature with she's an interdimensional creature with with powers beyond your mortal ken, but that doesn't feel like she'd be in a Spider-Man story. Well. Sort of. And by by virtue of her being a wasp totem and her and her basically wanting to corrupt all the Spideys in the multiverse, it does still kind of tie her more closely to Spider-Man. And as a result, while she is more of a godlike entity, she at very least feels more appropriate for someone like Spider-Man to fight. And again, I do and as a result, I do think that she can kind of work. Plus I love her design. I love how I love how her her design is just like a very black. It's just her whole body is black, with the only real light in there being her eyes and her mouth when she gets angry, which makes sense considering that she's supposed to be a spider wasp totem. As as which makes sense because after all, as we've seen, as we saw in like Edge of Spider Verse, in Edge of Spider Verse and. and Issue one of the last Edge of Spider Verse miniseries. Basically, while she, basically while she meant is meant to hunt totems, she does that by kind of lulling them into a false sense of security, making them want to follow her, and then use that and then use that opportunity to get them into a position where she can strike and convert them to her cause, like what she did with Spider Man Noir when she went to the Noir universe and just and and pretend want and essentially grew close to him in order to get him into a position where she could sting him with one of her wasps. So in that regard. It does work in that regard. We are shown that she can be a very crafty, and, and we can see that she can be that also that, that alone shows that Shatra can be very crafty and can outthink the heroes in that regard. And then add on the fact that she's already gaining more power and actually gaining a getting a bigger advantage over the heroes. I think it works. I think she. And I, I think it works, and it really helps to showcase that she is someone you don't want to mess with. But at the same time, it sh same time, despite her omnipotent power, we're shown that she isn't infallible either. As the Spideys are still getting one up, do still get like little wins over her. And uh, quite frankly, I could, and I th and, and quite frankly, I still I still liked when Miles kind of started kind of mocking her when she realized that he wasn't in her thrall. So I dig that. 
but although but again it really does help carry the weight of what kind of a villain she is and overall while she is a big over while she is kind of overpowered i think she does fit for the for the context of the story especially for spider-verse because like with other previous spider-verse storylines considering that we need to get something so big that it requires the aid of all the spideys in the multiverse a spider a spider wasp godlike shatra is more than essentially is more than ready to be is more is more is essentially more than worthy of being a foe for the spideys to take down so Again, I dig it. As for the story itself, it very much moves at a very it moves at a very quick pace, but unlike other, but it doesn't feel rushed in that regard. It move the story does move along and it's uh, it does move very comfortably along, and as a result, it can actually be a very entertaining and enjoyable ride. And throw, as throughout the comic. As throughout the comic, we are st we establish very quickly that the stakes are high. So them moving at a quick pace like they are does make sense for the context of the story, since after all. <clears throat> the bad guy is getting a bit the bad guy has more is more than a few steps away for is more is more than a few steps ahead of them and ahead of the heroes and as a result the heroes kind of need to kind of quicken their pace they need to do everything they can because they need to do everything they can to take her down because as they are right now they are no match for her. She is all. She has effectively secured a victory, and the only reason that the, the only reason the spiders aren't giving up hope is because there are still a few left standing, and there are still some things that they could do to take her down. The only problem is, well, she's too powerful. She's too strong. She's too smart, and as a result. It's as a result, even when the Spideys do try and one up her, she's able to outthink them and outmaneuver them, and it very much co it very much ra keeps raising the stakes and keeps you on the edge of your seat because it because unlike other previous Spider Verse storylines where the good guys have at least gained a few little victories against the bad guy before the final battle, this one the bad guy keeps trouncing them when they try and go to the Temple of Net to get that to get the spot to get the artifact to restore lost spider totems. That's when. So that's when Shathra ends up sending her, ends up sending her, her horde, her hordes to them. They try and get the knife away from. They try and go and get the knife so they can use it against Shathra. Shathra takes the opportunity to infect one of them, learn of their plan, which leads to her sending her team to the group. They think, well, even if we lose the spider, if we lose the dagger, we still have the main, the chosen one right here. Boom! Peter's taken off the board by Shathra. Then after, and then of course, then on top of that, as thing, on top of that, even when they get the dagger and try and sneak into Shathra's base again, things go wrong because it turns out Shadra is immune to the dagger because she's not actually connected to the web of life and destiny. Put simply, it very much the, the story knows how to keep stacking the deck against the heroes and as a result, even when we are getting even when the heroes start getting little victories and are trying their best to take Shadra down, it quickly becomes clear that they may not win. And even by the end of the story, they only manage to beat Shadra by the skin of their teeth. The only reason they even, the even, only reason they even got that victory was because Moreland decided fuck it we're dying anyway I might as well feast on someone and Cindy had to and, and when he chose Cindy she had to defend herself and the only weapon she had on uh, that she had available was the totem dagger and as a result that pretty much just showed and as a result while they did, as a result, while these actions do end up beating Shathra as by by essentially severing Moreland from all from the life forces of all the Spideys that he's killed, it does restore the web of life and destiny, and like I said, it does also restore the Spideys he killed. But by that same token, that was just dumb luck. They only got that victory because of the because things just happened to fall into place. If they hadn't, if things hadn't gone that way, if Moreland hadn't done what he did, if, if Cindy had not grabbed the dagger, it's very much clear that Shothra would have won, even if Peter finished making the, his great web slinger. That would not have been an, his great web shooter. So as a result... It very much is clear that Shathra could have won this, which makes it even, which makes the victory feel even better because we know, because you know that we, because you know that through all that that all that struggling was finally worth it, just to finally take Shathra down. And I think it's great. I really do think it's great. I will say that there are some faults to the story, as by virtue of the story starting when it does by having the mains by having Spidey and Co join the story right as right as shot after so long has happened, it does feel like. We we kind of, it does feel like we're kind of jumping a little into the middle of a tale rather than actually seeing it progress, which even with the build-up with Edge of Spider-Verse, it does kind of feel like we're kind of missing a few steps, we're kind of missing a few steps, as it is implied that Madam Web 
and Madam Web, Spider UK, and Aranya have been fighting this fight for a good long while, and so as a result, that does kind of lack, and I will give credit where, and I will still give crap to certain decisions. Again, still not forgiving the storyline for what it did to the Inheritors, and by extension, the Spider-Man. That is still shitty, and there is no force on this earth that will make me forgive that at all. So, still gonna consider that a problem. And even that, and while I am, and while I do still like the quick pay, and, of course, and the thing is, while I do like the quick pace and tension, and it's still awesome with all the fan service, and I still think the fan service in this storyline is kick ass with all the different Spideys you see, and even with the Spideys we, and even with a small number we do have on standby, it's still cool seeing them interact and so forth. Much like with the other Spider Verse stories, because of the quick pace, there's not really a lot of time for character moments in between everything, so we don't really have moments where characters just sit down and talk, as they always have to be on their toes to take shots or down, so. As a result, while I do still like their interactions, there are still there are not as a lot of character moments, so to speak, throughout the story. So I am going to consider that a problem. With that said, uh, with that said though, I think End of the Spider Verse is just still a genuinely good storyline. It's not a perfect story. It's not perfect, but it's still very much enjoyable and still carries that same thrill that all previous Spider Verse stories have had. From seeing all these different Spideys teaming up and working together, facing an insurmountable threat that none of them believe that they can take on on their own, to seeing that. To seeing all the different variety of Spideys all on standby, to, see, to seeing all the action going place, to see the heroes doing their best to take the hero down, from the great tension as they almost get close to achieving victory, to the to this great to the triumph of relief when they finally do, to even just seeing a whole army of Spideys ganging up on Shatter at the end, I think it's all awesome. On top of that, like with every good Spider Verse story, we're introduced to a handful of new Spideys in this one, and of course, this is like I said, this storyline is also the debut of the main universe Spider Boy, and. Uh, uh, yeah, his appearance in the story definitely drove up interest in the finale, then up and then some. And I will not deny, when I first learned about Spider Boy's existence, I thought, holy shit, I want to know more about this character. And while we're not going to get into his entire backstory in these vlogs, he will be reappearing in a later comic, so we will get more time to talk about him. So, until then, so, but either way, at the very least, he still reappeared in these comics, and I, he still appeared in these comics, and I dig it, so. Yeah, on the whole, End of the Spider-Verse is not, it's not perfect, but it's still a really damn good story. It's very enjoyable, full of, full of kick-ass action, great tension, great char great character interactions, plenty of fan service. Overall, End of the Spider-Verse is still just an enjoyable time. Not a perfect, not perfect, but still enjoyable. So, there you go. But anyway, with all that out of the way, I just, like I said, there is still one more story we need to talk about. And that one is a, kind of a bonus story that, uh, that... Yeah, like I said, like, like I said, when I read these comics, I'm reading them through the trade, so I don't always know what the comics are supposed to be look are supposed to look like when they're not in collected editions. Well, turns out issue five actually had a bonus story. It was called "The Sounds of Music," and it was and it was written as it was written to coincide with Black History Month. And the and the premise of the story is this: Peter Parker has gotten tickets to go to a music fest called Sound of Palooza, and He's lost his ticket. He rolls up onto the scene, and he and unfortunately can't find it. And, well, he can't go rummaging through all his stuff because there's a bunch of people behind him. So his car is directed to the lost ticket area where people have to find their tickets. And sadly, Peter's not having any luck. Ultimately, he decides, well, he came all the, he came all the way to Sound of Palooza for something. So he decides, fuck it, nah. Fuck it, I'm not going away empty-handed, and so he ends up switch. He ends up getting into his Spidey jammies and goes into Sound of Palooza because, hey, he at least paid for the ticket. He should at least deserve to enjoy the concert. However, as he's swinging around, he ends up running into he ends up running into Mon he ends up running into I think Monica Rambo. Yeah, I think it's Monica Rambo. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's Monica Rambo. Basically, and the thing is. And, as, and the thing is, Monica immediately recognizes that Sp immediately recognizes Spider-Man because, well, distinctive costume plus. He's making bad jokes, so she can easily tell that this is him. As such, Spidey begins wondering what Monica is doing here, and, well, she's here on a favor. She's not really here to enjoy the music, so to speak, but the governor's daughter is at Sound of Palooza, and as a result, the governor asks Monica to essentially be like her pseudo-bodyguard. And so, while Monica may not be a big fan of all the music here, she's still, she's still doing her duty. Although, considering that Spidey is here, well, she thinks, well, if you're here, I can give you the VIP treatment. And so she does take him to a special show where we see that the, where we see the governor's daughter's rocking it out to a band on stage that, ironically, that's the band that Peter came to go see. So, you know, everything's 
is all, you know, everything is all fine, and Monica ends up poking Peter a little by by kind of making fun of the fact that apparently he because that the tickets to come here were thousands of dollars, and he's typically poor. But as the band as the band on stage continues playing, immediately the sound just goes sour, which causes everyone to cover their ears. But Peter Spider Sense alerts him that that's not the band, and sure enough, from off stage comes the Rhino, who is here to kidnap the governor's daughter. As such, Spidey immediately jumps into action and starts duking it out with the Rhino. But sadly, th but sadly, this battle is not going in Peter's favor. As the Rhino, as while well as well Spidey tries duking it out with the Rhino, he's able to avoid Peter's web shots before grabbing a stereo and throwing it at Pete. And throwing it at Peter. Peter's able to avoid it, but in the midst of that chaos, the Rhino comes in and headbutts Peter right into the stereo again, which does hurt him. As such as the Rhino is running in ready to finish him off, well, Maria realizes Spider-Man's losing this fight, and so she goes into her prism jammies as she flies up and, and that manages to whoop the Rhino's ass. Though when she knocks him out, he lands on Peter, and uh, yeah, he needs, a, he needs a neck brace. But ultimately, yeah, Rhino is taken down, and... As such, Spidey webs him up and they decide to leave him for the authorities. But in the meantime, though, with the danger past, well, everyone decides it's time to rock out, and Maria at least thinks that Spidey at least deserves to rock out with his terrible band. And so, the story ends as everyone is on stage dancing to a new song. Well, Peter laments that this might end up ruining, that this might end up ruining shows for him for a while. Also karaoke, so, there you go. Story's enjoyable. Not story's enjoyable. I'm only really including it because it's a part of this, but otherwise, it's again just enjoyable. It's just a fun time. It's just not. It's nothing really too serious. Not really part of the whole Spider Verse storyline, but it is fun in its own right. It's cool seeing Spider Man just kind of going in there and starting to have. It's fun seeing Spider Man just going in there and just wanting to have a little bit of fun at a concert. It is kind of. I do the fight. The, the fight with the Rhino is honestly enjoyable, even if it doesn't end in Spider Man's favor. I love the banter that he and that he and Prism have. I do. I love the fight banter between him and the rhino and i like that by the end it's but i like by the end that Pri i like that by the end that prism is able to provide assistance and help take rhino down well she does most of the work spidey just webs him up after he gets knocked out but it's still enjoyable and i still like their team dynamic so on the whole just an enjoyable story so yeah i think that's really all i have to say uh, again and the spider verse pretty and the spider is pretty good and pretty good such very good and so enjoyable in its own right full of fan service and just as a fun time overall though there are some some kind of black marks every here and there and likewise the bonus story enjoyable in its own right so on the whole on the whole end of the spider verse very much worth your time so yeah i think that's really all i have to say I thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and while we are finished with End of the Spider Verse, we still got some follow-up material before we can move on to the second stuff. So we can look into the second core storyline in the finale era. So next time we meet, well, I think it's time we check in with a few more voices in the Mar in the Marvel multiverse. As well, we as well we see we see the tales of a few of a few Spideys of a few Spideys from less from well I can't really I, was, I really have no way of sugarcoating this minority group so to speak so until then so until then and if you don't want to get on my case which eh, I probably deserve it anyway but either way get done but yeah get on my case all you want but next time we meet we're gonna be looking at Marvel Voices Spider Verse number one so till then I hope you have a good I hope you have a good Saturday and take care.